Chapter 12, Building Networks and Foundations. This week, what you have due is the design and development plan. It's due Sunday night by 1159 in Brightspace. So what do we include, include in a business development plan? Well, there's uh, about five key things. Opportunities for growth, funding plan, financial goals, sales and marketing activities, and team needs. Some of this overlaps with some previous sections you've done. In particular, if you did a good job on the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, then you have a leg up on this week. So what are our opportunities to, for growth? I want you to study your target market, your competitors, in your previous progress on this on this plan so far. From there, identify opportunities for growth, whether it's creating new products, adding more services, breaking into new markets, a combination of these, or other opportunities. Consider your options to work out what's best for your business. This may involve a possible pivot from a type of business that you were going to do, not completely, but maybe an add-on to your business. What's your funding plan? Determine how you'll fund your business. We've done this a little bit out of your financial analysis. Um, submissions, which were due this previous week, and I've provided feedback on that now. Uh, how much capital do you already have? What's your deficit? How much more are you going to need? How will you get it? Are you looking for an investor? Are you going to take out a loan? Remember, this business plan is supposed to be so good that it's going to convince an investor to invest in your business. You have good detail. Do You have a clear plan. They understand exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it. So that's going to be impressive to an investor or a bank loan officer. It'll up your chances of getting in funding. Now, what are your financial goals? Do profit, revenue, and cost projections? Um, what's your basis for setting your short-term, like quarter or long-term yearly financial goals? Now, usually right up front, you don't have huge, massive financial goals. Everybody wants to be the millionaire in the long run, but what are your intermediate and long-term financial goals? Be specific. Sales and marketing activities, figure out what sales and marketing efforts will effectively promote growth of your business and how these efforts will change you to get bigger and better. So make sure your sales and marketing plan is sturdy enough to support your growing business. What's your team needs? So part five, what's your team needs? Evaluate your existing team. Think about how you can improve their capabilities and meet your growth objectives that you previously stated in the previous part. So you're going to consider hiring new employees and what skills they need to have. So um, give some thought to this. This is um, your chance to kind of wrap up this um, business plan in, in terms of you know each of the individual pieces. The design and development plan gives you a chance to wrap it up there at the end. So if the big point of your business plan is to ask an investor for $10,000, you need to state that underneath your financial goals and reiterate it um, in your executive summary, which you need to write dead last. Um, just a heads up, uh, so we're one week out from having the design and development plan in. Uh, that means we're two weeks out from needing to have your rough draft. The more components that you go back and edit based on my previous feedback, the stronger that rough draft score is going to be. And the better your rough draft is, the more I can give you insights on what takes it from being, say, a B- minus to an A- plus on the final business plan. So... This week is all about working on your business plans. Um, if you haven't already, you need to be working on it every night to make your next two weeks much easier. All right, hopping back to the reading here. Building networks and foundations. This is some stuff that can help you with your assignment this week. So what are we looking at doing here? Well, everyone says, that, you know, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. Uh, there's some things to say you need to know, have a basic skill set, but it certainly helps to know the right people, especially as an entrepreneur. So you need to work on networking. You need to make connections while here on this campus. You're like, well, that doesn't help me. Hmm. Yeah, did you know a potential roommate might end up being the CEO of a company that you'd really like to work with? Perhaps if you network with them right now, down the line, you'll be able to help each other. There's also a large network of SMC alumni. You have your classmates. You have social clubs, things like the Entrepreneurship Club that could help you. You have special interest groups around campus that might have some insights into what, how your business can be successful. You have academic organizations like Student Services. If you want to open up, say, an ice cream truck or something like that, perhaps you could partner with Student Services. I know we have some students in this class right now that are looking to partner with the campus store and the seller and you know some little things on campus. Uh, you have extracurricular activities. Perhaps you could cater to that. Uh, so don't sleep on the broad nature of experts and contacts you could be making right now on campus, including your one-on-one -on -one weekly meetings with me, which some of you guys are ignoring. I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. That's why your participation score is going to be atrocious. There are different types of groups, open groups, closed groups, and hybrid groups. Open groups are just open to everyone. You can just come and go as you please. 
Entrepreneurship Club is an open group. You just have to show up at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. Closed groups. Uh, membership criteria means something you have to join, kind of like a fraternity or sorority. Structured, formal par uh, purpose. You may have to sh you know, show up for a certain amount of meetings to be a, considered a part of that group. A hybrid group is there's low barriers to membership. There are some kind of barriers, but they, they maintain some barriers to make sure members are serious. That's kind of like Entrepreneurship Club when we're doing a trip. Uh, I don't exactly want to take people on the trip who didn't help us earn any money, but if you help us earn money, you, you, it's pretty low barrier to be able to go. So keep in mind that's that's particularly true of anything in the world as well. It's things like trade associations. So if you want to go into retail, there's actually a retail trade association. Um, you really need to research the trade associations and see if there's actually any upside for your business. Up, you know, to start up, you're really just trying to. Keep entering accelerator. I want you to read this section thoroughly. Um, some of your businesses might actually be a nice fit for an incubator. What's an incubator? It's something that you kind of live in a little bit longer as a startup business. One to five years. Uh, there's no co cohorts, meaning you're not in it with uh, other people. You're, you're a one-on-one -on -one business and you work with the employees of the incubator to improve themselves. Uh, the business model is uh, you rent uh, space, but the, but the incubator itself is nonprofit. Selection is non-competitive. You just apply. Um, venture stage early or late, uh, so you can be an established business in an incubator as well. Education is kind of ad hoc, means at will. Um, human resources, legal, they typically provide like a, a selection of things that are continuously offered. Mentorship is really minimal or, or tactical, meaning very strategic, and the locations are on site. So that's the same thing in an accelerator, they're, they're on site. But what's the difference between an incubator and an accelerator? An accelerator was just like we said, it's faster. It's accelerated. You're only there for three to six months. You do have a cohort of other people trying to build their businesses in three to six months. Uh, Iron Yard is a common one across America. Incubators are more like set up by counties and local chambers of commerce. But an accelerator is just meant to get you in and out. You're in there for three to six months with uh, other people who are trying to do the same thing. You're going to look for an investment. Um from either the accelerator owners, you're gonna make like a pitch at the end, kind of like Shark Tank. Um, although it can be nonprofit as well. Um, the selection is very competitive. It's like a competition in an accelerator. You have condensed time frame to build your business, and they then ask a local investor that you need hundred thousand dollars for your business. Uh, it's also run in cycles, so incubators kind of are continuous. Uh, accelerators have basically a season. Uh, early, very early from idea to implementation, uh, venture stage. Um, there are seminars offered within the cohorts for education, so there's not ongoing like legal training. Uh, mentorship is intense by, by each other uh, and both by um, yourself and local experts. So all these things are, are handled online. Uh, I've been in a business incubator in downtown Charlotte in New York City. Uh, I've been in a business incubator in Union, South Carolina. I've been, you know, Gaffney. One of the best ones I've ever been to was in a business incubator in downtown Gaffney. Um, accelerators are more of a quick program. Uh, Spartanburg used to host something called the Iron Yard. Those are more of a thing nationally now, but um, they have various different names where they're like basically you apply for a program. You get in there and you develop your business over a three to six month period. It's kind of like a semester type thing. Um, there are some organizations out there that can help. And this is when we start talking about like financing and you're looking for loans and you're looking for grants or other investors. There's something called SCORE. That's the Service Corps of Retired Executives. It's really knowledgeable base who are really working who are working with the Small Business Administration. They want to see small businesses succeed. So imagine if you're starting a business, if you could pick the brain of a multi-million dollar executive who just retired, who's just looking to give back a little bit. SCORE makes that possible. Other government agencies here, uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Small Business Association, SBA. I think I've seen one project that looks like they're going to take out a loan from the SBA. I should see a lot more of that. You guys need to investigate that. Small Business Development Centers, SBDC. That's how you can get hooked up with an incubator or a uh, accelerator. Uh, women's Business Centers have plenty of women in this class. Um, you guys have an advantage. There's there's uh, small business association type organizations that's centered completely around creating more successful female entrepreneurs. Hub Zones, uh, there's a few of those around Spartanburg. I suggest you take a look at those. And then the SCORE retired executives that we talked about previously. Small Business Administration is a heck of a place to start when you're looking for ideas about your business. 
Um, they have small business development centers, SBDCs, Office of Women Business Ownership, uh, Veterans Business Outreach, VBOC, Hub Zone, again, is uh, geographically located around areas that typically have low employment, but there are hubs around Spartanburg County. Um, then you have to build your entrepreneurial dream team. All right, well, who, do you, who needs to be on there? The first thing you need, and none of y'all have said this, is you need an accountant. You need an accountant to keep you legal, both from a tax perspective and then also help you make decisions based on your books. So I would encourage you in your business plan to identify an actual accountant in the area. All right, we talked about cash flow, capital, inventory manager, debt service. You guys really need to take a look at that feedback I've provided you in your financial analysis plan and adjust accordingly. You need an attorney. You need an attorney to, especially if you're inventing something, if you need a uh, patent or a copyright, uh, you need an attorney uh, to make sure your set your business is set up correctly. Um, you can incorporate in 20 minutes on the South Carolina State uh, Secretary of State State Secretary of State, I should say, uh, website. That that doesn't take an attorney for that, but you're going to need an attorney to advise you on things like liability. Um, if you're running a business, here's a newsflash: you're going to be sued at some point. You're absolutely going to be sued at some point. You need to know if that happens, who your attorney is. So you need to do some research and include that in your business plan as well. Uh, those are nice cherry on the top type things, but a big thing that's going to make a bank feel better if they give you a loan and you have an attorney. If they give you a loan and you don't have an attorney and you get sued and you lose all their money, they're not going to be happy with you. You're going to go bankrupt and ruin your own credit. You need an attorney to protect you. Uh, by the way, you need a banker. Who's going to be your banker? What bank are you going to go with? How? Why? What's your credit? Is that banker going to work with you? Oh my goodness gracious. Insurance. You need an insurance agent. Especially, so if like starting a gym or something, man, that's some serious liability. You're going to get sued. You need liability insurance to protect you from that lawsuit. It protects you both individually and your business to keep it in existence should you be sued. Um, liability reports. You can look at the North American Industry Classification System, NAICS, and get some good data there. People are like, where are you getting all this information? Google North American Industry Classification System. You need insurance if you're serving food. If you have you have employees coming in that could slip and fall. You have customers who come in and cut themselves on a hanger in your 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 shop. You need to make sure you have insurance to cover that, and also an attorney to back you up, and also an accountant to make sure your numbers are right. Uh, and then you may want to take on an advisor that's an industry expert in something you've done. This is kind of more informal. You take on an, an advisor in terms of. Uh, Someone who's been there and done that, and that's where score comes in. You could you could you could pile in score right here in terms of using some of those retired executives that can give you some good advice. So your advisors and service providers, attorney, financial institution like a bank, insurance agent, industry expert, and any other thing you might need related to your specific business. So uh, I'm pretty sure this wraps up what I wanted to cover in this brief kind of lecture overview developing an overall oh operation business plan let's take a look at this real quick um you remember we talking about like hey describe how your business is going to work when you walk in what does your business look like well you need to have a manager you need to have somebody maybe at the front counter all right you're gonna have somebody working unless this is a grocery store but who do who's covering who and you need to overlap because if eleanor calls in sick and monica is at a conference then who's going to cover the front counter jamal Okay, if Monica's out, Keith's got the management covered. Um, this is like Walmart. You think you take out register two and three and just have Gabrielle on register one, right? You need to think about if you have a storefront having a schedule like this. Okay, we have some people in here who are going to have storefronts. All right, and that's a great read on the operations there. Uh, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Pretty sure that's the bulk of what I want to cover in this 30,000 foot view of what we're doing. Okay, just making sure it's a long chapter, but guess what? That means you're gaining a lot of knowledge. Lots of knowledge. Do I expect you to read every word? Probably not, but do I expect to see some of these concepts in your business plan? You bet. So you need to find what fits your particular needs and roll with it. This is a great checklist of operational needs. Goes through item, goodness gracious, 20. This is step by step what this business needs to do. They're going to determine the legal organization of the business. This is LLC. What is it? It's incorporated. It's the name of the company. 
what are the what are the articles of incorporation what are your management agreements so if you're going to do a partnership with someone you need to include your your agreement with that person you need to put that in writing what's your exit strategy so if things all fall apart who's going to pay for what otherwise you're going to end up fighting about it over court and you're going to lose a friend you're going to do all these things first of all you don't go into business with friends they can be your friend but you go into business with business partners business partners have legal agreements and i need to see that in your in your final business plan um what's the bank account going to look like is it your bank account is it y'all's bank account is it just the corporation's bank account what's that going to look like how do you obtain a federal employee identification number you say hey we're going to have employees you can't just leave it there give me a fine how do you do that f-e-i-n federal employees identification number um you need to know what kind of licenses and approvals you need from your state and local governments uh, can you name your company Nike? No, Nike's already a protected trademark. Be sure you name your company something that you can legally have. What's your plan for securing a business? Phone number, website, email, domain, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we don't have to get too deep in the weeds there, but that's something you need to think about when you're building a business. How are you going to open a checking account? Where are you going to open a checking account? That goes back to your advisor being a bank. Um, sign those agreements regarding the business. Keep yourself out of trouble. If someone decides they want to leave the business, or do you have to buy them out immediately? What if that means you have to pay them $100,000 just because they decide to leave? You need to have an agreement in place that prevents you from getting stuck with something like that. Are you going to buy or lease your office space? All right. Uh, what are you going to need to be able to occupy the building? Do you have building, fire, health, and plumbing uh, certifications you need? What are you going to do to open utilities, water, electric, gas, garbage, phone calls? I know. I know, you're like, holy smokes, am I going to have to do all this for the final? I want you to do most of it. I really do. Because the better your business plan is at the end of this course, the more likely it is you'll have a realistic chance of actually opening the business. And that's the point. Uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're like, whoo, I'm going to need some more time here, do the best you can. I'll give you the best grade I possibly can. It may not be acceptable to you. I don't know. But if you're putting things like this in here, this is an A paper. If you're getting all 20 of these. Um... Post, uh, so what are, uh, what, what, what's those things you have to put in the uh, break room? It says, know your rights. You guys, most of you guys work. You have to be able to do that. What's your plan for that? Uh, apply for and post required license for business. Again, fate, uh, federal, state, county, municipal governments. If you're going to be in downtown Spartanburg, you need a business license. Apply for and post your required license, uh, licenses, permits for employees, specific types of products, services. You're going to have to have a food rating. You got to get cleared by DHEC to be able to serve food in the state. Um, you need insurance on your building, liabilities, uh, workers' comp insurance, that type of thing. Order and install furniture. If you're going to open up a restaurant, you need tables to for them to sit at. How, what does that look like? What's your inventory? What's the product list? I saw one earlier, and it was actually really good because they put all their ingredients in there, and they priced it out and everything, and that was awesome. You need that inventory. Uh, how are you going to recruit and hire employees? What are you looking for in your employees? Uh, training and certification. How are you going to train them? How you gonna, if you're going to open up a restaurant, how are you going to train your bartenders, your cooks, your drivers, your forklift operators, your first aid personnel? Are you going to have an AED on site? you got to start thinking about these types of things. You're a business owner. It all falls on you. Are you going to train people to help people that are choking if you're serving food? Are you going to uh, train people that they shouldn't be handing out aspirin to, to, to customers because if they take an aspirin and get sick and die, they can sue you. You don't give out medicine. All right. Might be a good idea to have an AED. Might be a good idea to have a first aid kit. What's your first aid policies? Uh, how are you going to train your people on that? Uh-huh. Stuff's getting deep, isn't it? Stuff's getting deep. Stuff's getting deep. That's why every week, if you're not working on this thing, you're going to get quickly overwhelmed. A lot of you have worked on a lot of this already, and you have a lot of these pieces. You're closer than you know. But I'm here to tell you, if you're not working on this, a little bit every day now, you're officially falling behind. Again, this week, we're looking at the design and development plan. This is the weekly announcement. You can always reach me in our weekly appointments. Hope you guys are doing well.